Underwriting for A Piece of the Woods was brought to you by Extreme Interiors International, building log homes for over 20 years. But we don't stop at the structure. We expose the hidden art of nature, the diverse character of trees into your habitat. To us, it's not a building project, it's an art project. There are still a few American companies dedicated to bringing quality into your workplace. We are one of them. Quality Manufacturing Company. Quality tools for quality work. Tenonizer Technology, an original equipment manufacturer dedicated to improving the quality of log construction for the log building family, finding better ways to bring a piece of the woods into your home. Great Woods Cabinetry is a full custom cabinet shop working projects from the start or just at the finish. From online to on site, check us out at www.greatwoodscabinetry.com. We're going to be putting up the sheetrock in this room today. We've got all of the log work done that has to go in before the sheetrock. We've got our, our, the boards on the ceiling and the logs and it's all fitted in and insulated and poly. And we've got relatives here for today that come to visit, so we're going to put them to work. We are also going to be going into another room. Josh is working on some stuff over there for the logs being fitted into the ceiling. In the, other, in the other room of this stick frame conventional build home on today's A Piece of the Woods. stuck with having to finish the rest of this myself and of course Josh is in the other room getting the logs ready for the ceiling but it's it's all working there I told you to fit now I know this is this isn't a show about sheetrocking of course but conventional house you're gonna be stuck with some sheetrock you need to know how to work around it We've got this block up here now. This is the same, same cuts as we use for the blocks that actually support this log, but this one was put in as backing, as were the rest of the ones along here. So we have a surface here right at the back of the sheetrock that we can fasten our trim to. And this one also has the center mark that matches up center line design, center mark right here, and that we will We'll, we'll locate where we are going to make our cutout. So just, just watch. A measurement from, from the wall to the center of each block. So pull a measurement from the wall to the center of each block. And then from, from the top of the sheetrock to um, basically up to the log and then I'll add three and a half inches of space that brings us up to the exact center. So we only need to locate one point. Okay, over to the center of this log I've got 89, if I'm tight to the wall I got 89 and 5 eighths, but I'm going to give a little bit of space so I'm going to call it 89 and a half. So up to it, 89, one half. And I need to locate one, one point. That's only one point, the exact center of this log, okay? So here I've got tight would be six and three quarters. I'm gonna give a little space again, call it six and five eighths. Now we've got a seven inch diameter circle that we're working with. So we're gonna go six and five eighths plus three and a half, 
So what have I got? Nine, no, that's 10, and 1 eighth up from this point is going to be the exact center of this log. That's the only point I need to find for this one right here. And of course, we found the middle of the two before this. OK, we've got 89 and a half up to the middle, the center of the, oops, 89 and a half up to the center. And of course, in this bedroom, is in basically all the house, you've got nine foot ceilings. The only place that doesn't have a nine foot ceiling is the entryway and the kitchen. We got 10 and eighth. We come up 10 and an eighth to the center of our log in the ceiling. That's a seven inch tenon around it, or seven inch tenon, so a seven inch hole. But with the nine foot ceilings, we end up with this, this uh, piece at the top. In this case, it ends up 13 inches as far as this ripping here at the top, which makes it so easy to fit this in. You know, the log houses are beautiful, but you know what? A stick frame house with log accent work is exceptional. It can, you've got so many possibilities and the things that you can do with it and the coloring and the finishing, just exceptional. One little nail hole. One little nail hole in the center of where that log goes. And of course, my tendency for overkill and is, you know, perfect's good enough. It shows up in the sheetrock too. This is 5 8 rock. <laughs> you know, what can I say? good enough, it really is. <laughs> The logs on the ceiling here weigh a few hundred pounds a piece. Now there's an easy way to get them up into place and there's a difficult way. Easy way is to go outside of the box, you know. You go up to the roof with a cable and pull them or up to the second floor, pull them from the attic space or something like that. What's difficult is if you have to work inside the box, which is where you're going to be most of the time. So we took a couple extra days to work through the system to show you what most often what you're going to be stuck with. You know, we don't have this, uh, you know, call in the Marines and get 12 guys to just come and lift it up into place. You know, you can't do that. If you're stuck with the Army of One, well, you got to find another way. And that's what we're going to show you. 
If you think it's a mission impossible, just take a look. We have a notched log with the anchor, with a cable attached to the anchor. The cable then goes up over a pulley, which will stay in place forever, and then to a hook on a come along. The come along is then attached to an anchor point on the far side of the room, where one person can hoist it up into place. If you decide to accept the mission, let's go out to the briefing room and see what comes next. Now we went through these first, and we did everything that was common to all of the logs. We had so many that had to be a specific length, and then so many that were just flat on top, and we did all the top flat cuts. And all of the tenons were the same diameter. The length of tenon was you know, the same on all of them. But then the thing that changes is what we're going to be doing, you know, what we're doing now, the individual notching to fit into a specific place. So in this case, we've got, we've got uh, let's see, you see the line down here? the notch across the bottom. Now this is giving about a quarter of an inch of space uh, for the two top plates on the wall, the top, top plates right here. And coming in then, we've got coming into where the edge of the wall would be, or the, where the edge of the wall is, and then an additional space for our pulley, the plate, and the head of the bolt. In this case, we're adding an inch and a quarter space coming into the room, which of course the trim is going to cover all of that. You'll never see the space where the pulley is or the pulley, or it'll look like just like you see it here, solid law going into the wall. And of course, it's just for you know its own natural beauty once it's up into place. It's not a it's not a structurally supporting log, although it could be, but it but it isn't. The length of the space, or the space uh, wall to wall, we've got 183 inches. Our log ceiling joists are 16 feet, or 196, no, that's not 196, it's 192, 192 inches. And we're leaving a five and a half inch notch on each end, so down the middle we end up with 181, 181 inches for our length, which would leave us a five and a half inch notch here at the end. I got five and three quarters. That's close enough to make it work. Now to make the notch, we're going down three inches. So we're going to sight one side of the log to the square to the three inch mark. I come down here and put one on the line there. Same thing over here. Sight the flat of the log coming across to the square at three inches and mark. I'm going to get a pencil because that shows up better. So there's our three inch, three inches from here to the top. Now the floor joists are inch and a, or not the floor joists, the two top plates, inch and a half and inch and a half, which is three. On the ceiling, we have three quarter inch of uh, tongue and groove board on the ceiling, so that's going to give us at least you know half to three quarters of an inch of space right there. So we won't be, it won't be too tight. You don't want to get it together and just have a problem with it being tight. All right, we can come down here again with the square sitting on top of the flat, come down three inches. And here's my little mark on the side, three inches down. And connect that. Do the same thing on the other side here. Come down three inches, mark on the end. Run it across. Line this up with my mark at the 180 whatever it was inches, 181. And I can sight straight down on the square and come and track that using the square right around. And that'll make my no.
this other notch here is to fit into the inside corner of the room where the stud in the corner encroaches into the spot where our, uh, uh, otherwise where our tenon would go into the wall. There's a stud that's right there. So we'll cut this notch out. Now one thing to be aware of if you're notching like this, you notice that I have always got the saw so it's tipped up as I come down like this. If I approached it like this, it would kick back and want to throw right back into my face. But it's always got to be so it's tipped, tipped up like that. Say at a negative angle. Hoist. You got to figure when you're working with the log stuff. Nothing, you got to figure that none of it is light enough just to pick up. If, if you do, eventually somebody's going to get hurt. So a hoist or something, something that's safe to handle this material is an absolute necessity. Okay, when we get back to the house, we're going to fit the anchor into this hole and shoot it down here with uh, several screws and the cable is going to come up from that point going over the pulley. Now the pulley is going to be into the wall but it's going to end up like this where it's shot into the top, two top plates of the wall with this top screw on here and the, the, the leg bolt. Cable coming up over here going off to the other anchor point. But then this, this little assembly here will stay in the wall forever. That'll just stay there. This little piece and this little pulley and the steel plate and the two screws. Just like that. Come to Papa. Well now we're back where we started from. Let's pull this first log up into place and see how this system works. Remember to work with a three to one safety margin. Never get underneath the log. It's still hanging up by a, hanging by a cable. Don't get squished. There. Now we can get our posts in place underneath of it and get it set there forever and ever. Our little supports, or the little cradle for the log that the log sits in, all right, these are all the same, and the vertical supports, the studs, cripples, really. These are all the same length, and I gotta get one on either side to support these blocks in the rest of the notches on down the wall. We're gonna put uh, at least two blocks in each one, and then we're going to also, we're also gonna take right here for future backing, we're gonna need this to be flat right across here. Okay, we've got sheetrock coming up here and we got trim going around it. So we want backing right smooth across here along um, right at the log. So we're gonna fill it out right to there. Well, we finished the one, as you can see, it's up here on movable forever. And now we're gonna clip the cable off and get set up for the next one. When I chopped the cable, it's nice to have a little piece of black tape wrapped around it so it doesn't fray. And with a 
good sharp uh, side cutter. There we go. Bye bye. It's up there forever. Okay. Now you can pull the little piece of tape off. There we go. We have this little copper crimp. Look at that little deal there. Slide it through. Make a loop. Push it back through there. Now it takes an inch and a quarter of space in my loop to get that three quarter inch shaft through there. One more log, two more cables. We'll set these up, raise them up into place. Oh, look what I got here, a little pipe, hollow. Isn't that nice? This hole, here, that's how far it would go into the hole, and then it stops right there, all right? So what we're gonna do, the reason that I have this on the end, see this is sharpened here? I ground it down a little bit. So I can take this, just put it in its place, put it tight to the bottom, and just drive the end of it right into the log. So the one end of the pipe is already firmly anchored. And I'll shoot some of these screws into the holes I drilled here. Get in there. So it's one of those places you do not want anything to break ever. We'll figure out how strong it has to be, what the breaking point would be, and then triple it, and that's what you're going to do. There we go. One anchor ready. One cable ready to put up into place. Oh, we still got to put the pulley up on the top. Okay, for the placement of this guy, we're having the, the pulley or the cable is coming up from my left and the hook on the, or the anchor on the log is in the middle of it. Here is where the center of this log is gonna end up. So we're gonna put this little bracket right here so that the pulley is gonna be right behind it. So when the log comes up, the cable is gonna be hanging right smack in the middle here, holding the log by the middle and everything will balance correct. with a half inch hole in it. So I use a half inch leg bolt and a half inch hole in my plate. Well, we're gonna continue with this, get the last log up there. Last log, oh, that's a good thing. Well, we've got all the logs on the ceiling. Went a little bit easier than I thought it was gonna go. We've got sheetrock, of course you saw that, and the texture. We might show you the texture, how we did that on a helpful hint. And then we've got trim going up around. 
around the logs on the ceiling. We tried a few things here, we got a little bit up, but now we've got to do some other, this wraparound log that goes around, around the windows, gonna do the extension jam and the trim all in one shot. Oh, we got some nice things coming. In the other room, we're gonna do some, some log work in there with actually chinking in between the logs. That'll look really cool. But for now, thanks for joining us on Building with Logs on a Piece of the Woods. For more information about A Piece of the Woods Season 2 Conventional Building with Logs in Mind, go to www.apieceofthewoods.com. There you'll also find the Log Furniture Building episodes of Season 1. And remember, the woods is where treasure is hidden for you, not from you. Underwriting for A Piece of the Woods was brought to you by Extreme Interiors International, building log homes for over 20 years. But we don't stop at the structure. We expose the hidden art of nature, the diverse character of trees into your habitat. To us, it's not a building project, it's an art project. There are still a few American companies dedicated to bringing quality into your workplace. We are one of them. Quality Manufacturing Company. Quality too for quality work. Tenonizer Technologies, an original equipment manufacturer dedicated to improving the quality of log construction for the log building family. Finding better ways to bring a piece of the woods into your home. Great Woods Cabinetry is a full custom cabinet shop. Working projects from the start or just at the finish. From online to on site, check us out at www.greatwoodscabinetry.com.